Rob, it's incredible to have you here. Um, you know, editor in chief of the Daily Signal, the Heritage Foundation. Um, why don't we talk about media? That seems kind of fitting, right? It certainly does, yes. So, you know, something that struck me about media, go back a couple of days, right? There were two, uh, if you were to believe the media, there were two very important things happening simultaneously. One was there was an incredibly delicate uh, negotiation happening between the president and uh, the North Korean dictator, Kim Jong-un. At the same time, there was a hearing uh, with Michael Cohen uh, at the same time. At and, the and exact same at time. At the exact same time. That's pretty fascinating timing. Um, and and uh, t tell me a little bit well, about well, how the media looked from your perspective <laughs> Well, on let this. me just tell you my yeah. observation. I yeah. mean, frankly, I, I mean, well played on the part of the Democrats to steal the headlines because in the next day's papers, New York Times, Washington Post, LA Times, you can go down the list the top headline was about Michael Cohen and not about one of the most important negotiations that President Trump was going to have in his first term, and that is with North Korea. Now, important it, not just for Americans, right? Exactly, like, worldwide. But I will tell you, this is the problem that we have today. That the Michael Cohen headline is what sells, and they know that leading with that, in some cases, five columns all across the paper, dominating the nightly news, dominating cable news, uh, it was done purposely to take it, away it the attention like from President Trump. So, and then we found out no deal. Right. And, and it's a failure. <laughs> <laughs> but if you've read President Trump's book, Art of the Deal, you know that this is one of his best negotiating tactics. Sometimes you have to walk away. And, and I think that on day two and, and as we proceed, people are going to start to recognize that. I think the initial coverage was it's a failure. Uh, Trump fails in Vietnam, uh, but that's going to subside because I think as people recognize that North Korea is acting up to its old games again, President Trump was probably right to do what he did. To me, it seems like an obvious negotiation tactic, not only against North Korea, but you know, Xi Jinping was definitely noticing what was happening over there. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, and look, I, I think, frankly, these stories that we're talking about, I mean, it's the exact reason that we created the Daily Signal. It's, it's a reason that the Epic Times exists, because there are so many outlets today that are not interested in either telling the truth about what is really happening or deliberately ignoring stories. I mean, you take CNN earlier this week, not reporting on the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Act vote in the Senate. I mean, a major vote in which the entire Democrat, almost the entire Democratic caucus votes against this and, measure. And of great interest it. to and Americans. And they ignore it. They right? completely ignore it. It was, it was, is, was it really that bad? It was, it, it was panned? Like, it, it was, wasn't? They're just not even covered. It was, the, look, you can go back just a, a, a short time ago with the uh, controversy in Virginia. You know, it took days for mainstream media outlets to cover delegate trans uh, uh, comments about abortion and what she was trying to do with her legislation. Media completely ignored Ralph Northam's infanticide comments. It wasn't until Northam's yearbook photos came out uh, with blackface that the media started to pay attention. The interim period, they were more than happy. There was, there was a great example where Time Magazine actually did a story criticizing a Republican governor for his comments on the weather and the polar vortex while completely ignoring Ralph Northam and his comments on infanticide. And this is the world that we live in. And this is why I think the media's, uh, the trust in mainstream outlets has gone down. Record lows. Why conservatives yeah. in particular have lost faith in those organizations and why places like the Daily Signal and Epic Times are on the rise. And I think it's so critical that we do the work that we're doing. So it, 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 I want to get your take on this, actually. I, we've, I've been noticing a uh, shift uh, in let's call it the narrative around the Mueller investigation. I'm wondering if you've noticed something around this. I find it pretty fascinating because it's been pretty steady, right? Mueller is going to find the truth. Mueller will expose everything. Um, there's a lot of people expecting this. That If you look on Twitter, there's a heck of a lot of people who have already convicted, or whatever it is, that it would be the charge. Um, and yet, uh, uh, suddenly, I mean, maybe about a week ago, maybe we can have something like that, I'm seeing a little bit of a shift. I see Adam Schiff, speaking of Schiff, um, uh, saying things like, well, it doesn't, uh, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but we're going to keep, we're going to keep on. No, I'm sorry, it was actually Nadler. It was Representative okay. Nadler that said that. It, it you know, d doesn't matter what happens with Mueller, we're going to keep looking. Um, what's your take on this? Well, I think it's a, a great example of another s situation where you could have 
uh, the, the report come out, the media dissatisfied with the findings, <laughs> and then basically write their own report. And, and they're going, I mean, there's a no, this is a no-win situation for President Trump is basically what it comes down to. So uh, the, the, the report could come out, and it could come out in the next week or two weeks or sometime in the short period. It's imminent, and, and, I mean, Right, think, right, exactly. Yeah. And we could know instantly, or you know, if, uh, if the Attorney General decides not to release the full report, of course, then that'll be a controversy, and it'll be like, okay, what is he hiding? And we'll have days of this coverage. It's almost like we could predict <laughs> Predict exactly. what the coverage is going to be. That's absolutely that, predictable. That, that's is. that's very disturbing to me. Well, because it's right? a, it's a reversal of what I think so many of us learned when we uh, learned journalism and reporting. I mean, you actually observed what was happening and you reported on that. And now uh, you're right. Even before Mike Pence or Donald Trump speak at CPAC, the stories are already written. You, you, you know that in many cases they're going to latch on to certain things and, and portray them in the most negative light possible. Uh, you know, sitting in, the, uh, in the, the press room here at CPAC, I mean, you can almost see it on the reporters' faces who are in that room. So it's not a surprise. And I think the American people are smart enough to see through it. But not enough of them, perhaps. Perhaps not enough of them. Or, or, well, or, or, or are you just not doing a good enough job? Or uh, you know, I, I've been saying we've been writing about, for example, we've been writing about Huawei, right? Yes. This extremely dangerous Thank company, you for your coverage, yes. not just for you know America, for the world, right? Basically, arm of the Chinese Communist Party for at least a decade, for at least a decade. Um, but we didn't. I feel like we didn't do a good enough job. <laughs> transmitting this information now people get it in a broader sense but I, I think distribution is one of the hardest things that outlets like ours face because we we <laughs> are, are at a disadvantage uh, compared to the legacy media outlets which in some cases you know have you know built-in advantages on social media and other forms Rob thank you so much thank pleasure you, to speak with you